In this episode of Mad Skills, you'll learn how to add multiple constraint sets to the same motion layout. Motion layout isn't limited to only two constraint sets per layout, such as the start and end. You can define as many constraint sets as you would like to build the animation you need. Now, you might do this if you're representing multiple states to the user. For example, in a payment app, you might have a state for transaction not started, transaction in progress, and transaction complete. You could represent each of these visual states using a constraint set. Then you can define a transition between any of the states. Motion layout will keep track of which state it's in and choose the correct transition to get to the destination when you ask it to animate. If you're new to motion layout, be sure to check out the previous episodes first to learn the basics of motion layout. Let's revisit the entrance animation from the first video again and break it into multiple constraint sets. You may want to do this when your designer has a complex, long-running animation like we do here. To get started, I've removed all constraint sets and transitions from the motion scene, and we'll add them and explore how to set up multiple constraint sets. Create a new constraint set by clicking the Create Constraint Set button and giving it a name. We'll call this one Initial. You can leave it based on the motion layout for now. For this video, I'm going to skip over creating the constraints and keyframes, check out the previous videos to learn how to do that, and scrolling background is now constrained. Let's create another constraint set called Empty that just fades in the background. Click Create Constraint and name it Empty. And again, I'm going to cut through setting the constraints so we can focus on adding transitions. There's a button on the top for creating a transition that looks like an arrow. When you click it, you can create a transition between constraint sets. A transition from initial to empty is exactly what we want. To make the transition automatically play, change it to animate to end and set the duration to 200 per our designer. You can do that by selecting the transition in the overview and editing the attributes on the right. For the next part of the animation, create a new constraint set, this one called first half, and it will deal with setting the stage for the bulk of our animation. To save time, you can derive the constraints for first half from empty. Do that by setting the based on dropdown to empty. When you do this, the default constraints will come from empty instead of the layout itself. And you can see the constraints are derived in the overview with the arrow on the bottom. Now we can add a transition from empty to first half. Click the add transition button to make sure it's set to animate to end. When you chain animations that are set to animate to end like this, they'll automatically play one after another as if they were a single animation. And it's added to the overview. Let's set the constraints and keyframes quickly with another cut and continuing quickly, we'll add the rest of the constraint sets and transition the same way. Now, working with our designer, we can review each part of this animation, tweaking the constraint sets. Because we set each constraint set to derive from the previous, which you can see here with the arrows on the bottom, if we make a change to the constraint set in the middle of the animation, it'll carry through the rest without having to edit every single constraint set. You can see the derived constraints in action when we select second half. The text and subtext are constrained in middle animations, while the rest of the views are constrained in second half. It's worth noting that constraint sets are more expensive than keyframes. It's okay to make a new constraint set every few hundred milliseconds in a long running animation like this, but you should avoid trying to make a new constraint set every few frames. Using multiple constraint sets, let us break apart this complex animation to work more easily with our designer. They're also useful when you have different states that can be reached by the user. By using multiple constraint sets in motion layout, you can build very complex interactions using only motion layout. In this video, you learn how to define multiple constraint sets in the same motion layout. In the next video, you'll learn how to build a collapsing header to show a real world integration of motion layout. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for notifications as soon as new episodes are published. To learn more about motion layout, check out the code lab and motion layout integration samples that these videos are based on in the links below.